There's a face I don't recognize. Welcome to my city. I'm Jarl Metellus. Tell me, what is your name? I'll talk to you soon, I hope. There's a face I don't recognize. Welcome to my city. I'm Jarl Metellus. Who's there? Wait. Dragonborn? Is that you? What is this one doing here? This one can hardly believe it. Is it... really you? Strange. Do you... How... long... Do you think it's been since we saw each other? Minutes? It's been years. Makara thought you were gone. That she would never see you again. You remember killing Metellus, yes? And the voice that came after? Filling the air around us? There was a bright light that shone all around you. Blinding. It only lasted for a moment, but when it disappeared, you were gone as well. The sky went dark and the city was plunged into chaos. The Centurions came to life and set the city aflame, burning everyone and everything. Without Metellus to reset the time loop, the damage was... horrible. Everyone... everyone... died. Makara did not know where you had gone, what had happened to you. She thought maybe the light had transported you to another part of the city. And so she searched. As the Centurions rampaged and the slaughter dragged on, she hid, moving only through the shadows, and she searched. After a few hours, the screams in the city went quiet. And after a few days, the Centurions went quiet as well. And then... Only Makara was left. The entire city had transformed into this... abyss of death. And once the fires burned themselves out, and the darkness and quiet settled over the city, Makara knew she was well and truly alone. She did not know if you were dead or alive, and though she continued to search for weeks, she found no trace of you. You were just... gone. Yes, it took some time for the reality of Karjit's situation to hit her. She identified corpses, hoping each time not to find you lying before her. Some were burned beyond recognition, but she managed to find Duli, Rastasia, Miranda... And all the while, this one searched in vain for a way out. There was... nothing. No escape. Just corpses and darkness. After a time, Makara gave up. Set herself to surviving, staying alive. That was years ago. Hmm. Of all the thoughts that have gone through Makara's head over the years, anger has never been among them. She does not blame you for this. You could not have known what killing the Jarl would do to you. Or to this one. She is just... Glad to see your face emerge from the darkness. She is glad to see you again. You think you can find a way out of here? Something that Makara missed? Well, by all means. We have nothing to lose. And all the time in Mundus. Alright. Let's go.
Dragonborn. These holes get dimmer by the day. You have been gone for so long now that Makara no longer remembers your face. It has been lost to the darkness, along with everything else. She is not even sure why she is writing this note. Presumably someone will read it someday. Long after Khajiit is gone and her bones have turned to dust, but... She is not writing it for them. When you disappeared and the Centurions descended on the city, it was a nightmare. Makara had no idea what had happened to you, but she did not have a chance to think on it. The next several days were about survival, sticking to the shadows, avoiding the flames and axes and hammers of the animunculi. In the end, the city was bathed in flame and blood, and when the Centurions returned to sleep, only Makara remained. Perhaps it would have been better if they had cut her down. A bit of pain for a brief moment, and then nothing. It would have been preferable to... This... Perpetual darkness. All day, every day. There is no time in this place. It stretches on into the abyss, and is lost. And you don't realize it, living in the sun. But time is all that holds us together. Without it, we unravel. Makara tried to keep her time, tried to pass it searching for a way out, and when that failed, she tried to pass it talking to the corpses. It was only when they began talking back that she realized how far she had slipped. They still speak to her, but she does her best not to listen. As Nagara sits here all these years later, the darkness spins and sways before her, taunting her, bearing down on her. She's not sure how much more she can take, and she understands more and more why the old man did what he did all those years ago. But the reason Khajiit writes this note, if you ever do come back to this place, she wants you to know she doesn't regret it, coming with you. If this is the end, so be it. Our time together was among the best of Makara's life, and her only regret is that it was cut so short. Take care of yourself, Dragonborn, and know that you never left this one's thoughts. Makara. Hi there. You gave me a bit of a fright. I thought I was in here alone. Well, that's a relief. Say, I didn't catch your name. Really? That's strange. I was just reading an old journal I found here. It was burnt, but the last entry mentioned someone with the same name. It described an event about seven years ago. Someone with your name appeared in the city out of the lake house. Said hardly a word to anyone. Walked up to the Jarl and murdered him. Breaking some kind of ancient law. It said this triggered a horrific event which killed everyone in the city. While the stranger just disappeared in a flash of light. I... I'm not sure I understand. Uh, I'm sorry, come again. Um... Let me see that. Gods. This is my handwriting. I have spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles. This is... This is horrible. 
but I, I don't understand how I could have written it. I... I'm not sure I understand. So, you're saying, because you stopped a time portal from being opened, I never went through it. And that's why I don't remember any of this. I guess you saved my life then. But... Look at all the death and destruction you've caused. There must have been another way. And now you and I are going to have to live with the knowledge of what happened here for the rest of our lives. I almost wish you'd just let me die. I've been ready to get out of here from the moment I set foot in this place. I have one idea. There might be a way out through the bathroom, through the pipes that bring water into the city. There's a cracked wall. I'm not strong enough. But I think if you hit it really hard with a mace or a warhammer, we might be able to escape through there. It's this way. Sorry, Cass. I got lost in there for a while. If you hadn't sent your friend in to help me, I would have been trapped down there for good. And that place gives me the creeps. It's littered with burnt corpses. And the whole time I was down there, I felt like I was being watched. How about we get some sleep, and then head back to Markarth? Well, all right. But first, let me thank our friend. Thank you so much for bringing him back in one piece. I really thought I'd lost him. I can't thank you enough. Now, I promised you a reward. This is something I always carry with me, and it's become very dear to me. I'd like you to have it. Thanks again. My brother and I are in your debt.